In this example, I will continue to highlight the off beats, that is beats 2 and 4. I'll play three melodic fragments, all against the E dominant 7 chord. Let's hear the first melodic fragment, and this is how it sounds. 1, 2, 3, 4. Of the melodic fragment, which went something like this. Now, therein lies a nice new tendency pair, which is far going to me in solfege, or the perfect fourth going to the major third. We are ending, you know, on the chordal tone for E7, which is G sharp, or the major third. The other tendency pair which you've seen is T do, which was part of the second part of the fragment, which went like this. That's D moving to Do, and we've seen that before. Now, the second melodic fragment is played as purely 16th notes and sounds something like this. You can see we're again trying to highlight beat 4. Like in the first melodic fragment, we're now highlighting beat 4. And we're using the tendency pair that we used before, that is augmented fourth going to the perfect fifth. And finally, I'm landing on the perfect fifth, which is also a chordal tone. Looking at the chord E7, we are stopping on B, which is the perfect fifth. Now the final you know, melodic fragment that we look at is something that makes use of eighth note triplets, or sounds something like this. from the minor third, which is a tendency pair we've seen before, minor third going to the major third. The major third is a chordal tone for E dominant 7, it is G sharp that we are ending on and hence we are following all the basic three tenets so far. So let's try to hear all three examples, you know, up to tempo, one after the other. Let's see how it sounds. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. 